Ah, good old overhangs. You're so crucial to 3D modelling, but you're so fiddly to 3D print. Thanks to puny air flaws, however, 90 degree overhangs are much harder to print, and most people end up reshaping their model so as to avoid this issue. But today, after countless months of studying the use of black magic in 3D printing, I'm going to be showing you three ways you can print your overhangs without having to change your models. So this is the model we're going to be using to demonstrate the concept shown in the video. It's not anything in particular, the main elephant in the room is this large overhang here, which we're going to test our methods on. As you can see in the video, the first layer of the overhang looks very distorted. This is because when printing on thin air, the filament can't set in time and then it attaches itself to the nozzle. It's then pulled out of place and eventually results in heaps of plastic until it settles and carries on printing as usual. Even though sometimes you can get lucky and only have a few bad layers, failures can be much worse and are often more so on more detailed prints. Now the explanation's out the way, it's time to go through the first method we can use to defy gravity. Well, kind of. So the first thing you can do is rotate your prints. When I started out on 3D printing, I never thought about using this to print models, but now I know it seems blindingly obvious. If you use the print scroll bar, you'll see that all the printer has to do is print upwards. This means your print has a much higher chance of succeeding, and you'll get a nice polished finish on each face. Here's the print I got from using this technique. The only disadvantage of this method is that it can't be used every time. Some models have overhangs in different directions, and then rotating the model can only cause more or the same amount of problems. However, I still believe this method is the best on the list, as you can retain the most print quality. The next technique on the list is using support material. Support material is great because you can print complex shapes and geometries that wouldn't be possible otherwise. It also pairs well with and could even replace rotating your print, but I wouldn't use it too sparingly. Since this model is quite small and has a fairly simple geometry, using supports shouldn't do any harm. However, for larger and more complex prints, you'll want to stay away from using support material as it can get quite expensive and create lots of waste plastic that you can't reuse. If you're looking to start printing larger models, I suggest you take a look at the support settings in Cura. I'm not saying using support isn't viable, you just need to be careful when you're using, otherwise you're going to waste a lot of filament. I've had my fair share of support failures and still get some now. Here's the print I got from using supports. You should be able to pull them off with a pair of pliers or sometimes even just with your hands. The next technique on the list is called chamfering. Chamfering is where you take a 90 degree angle in your model and make it more sloped, which is more printer friendly. Although this does involve changing the shape of your model, I didn't think it was significant enough to take it out of the list. This tool has a few different names depending on which software you're using, but I reckon after a bit of exploring you should be able to find it in your menu. An advantage of this technique is that it only takes a few clicks per angle to carry out. However, you will need to change the shape of your model, which rules it out for decorative items. This method is also not very applicable to multi-part prints, because altering the shape of one part will mean you have to change the rest, which uses a lot of unnecessary time and effort, which let's be honest, none of us want to use. I'd only use this method as a last resort, but if you don't have the time to completely change your model to make it printable, this would be a good alternative. Here's the results I got from this print. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and you now know a few ways you can print 90 degree overhangs. You can leave any feedback or issues in the comments down below, and I'd be really grateful if you could like and subscribe to help grow the channel. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.